Ross Gerber, Gerber Kawasaki president and CEO. He's also a Tesla investor and former board member. And Dan O'Dowd, founder of the Dawn Project. As we mentioned, Dan has been a longtime critic of Tesla over self-driving technology. He's been in a battle with the company over it. Thank you both very much for joining us. Uh, since we know Ross's position in the stock, Dan, just to lay the table here, are you short any shares of Tesla or have any financial uh, ownership or relationship here? Nope. No, nothing, no shares, no puts, no calls, no anything. Why did you get in your bio? It says, you know, your your sort of goal is to see full self-driving eradicated. Why is that? Well, not eradicated necessarily. If they can make it work, I'm perfectly happy for it to come out. But it can't be out of there on the road. This is the worst piece of software I've ever seen in a safety critical product. It has horrendous safety defects that are, are simply intolerable. And, and it is not converging on success. They're not fixing the problems. They're just, they're, they're still there. Seven months ago, I told them that it, that a FSD would blow past a school bus with the red lights flashing and the stop sign out. I showed it to them. They didn't do anything. In February, I made a Super Bowl commercial showing this exact same thing it, and they ignored it. And in March, a kid in North Carolina stepped off a school bus and a Tesla on full cell, on on self-driving Tesla, um, ran past the flashing lights and ran the kid down and put him in the hospital, and he still is not fully recovered. Uh, and they've done nothing to fix the fact that it blows past school buses. Mm -hmm. At it's insane. I nobody would build a product like that. Ross, it, it is totally irresponsible. Ross, did you get Dan in the car? How did this car ride happen here? Yeah, Dan agreed to go in the car and. So we went up to Santa Barbara and met with him, and I let him pick wherever he wanted to drive as long as it was a, a real drive in a real environment, and he said, drive me to the office. So I said, okay, fine. So we got in Tesla, I engaged full self-driving, and it drove us to the office perfectly. You can see it all in the video. We went through 13 stop signs, eight humans were avoided, and six construction workers in a construction site. We went by fire trucks, schools, and everything, and the, the, the drive was perfect, and in fact, Really, the challenge that Dan is dealing with is the fact that his entire narrative is false, and and everything he's saying is a bunch of garbage. And and really, the the, the worst part of it is he's saying I'm blowing a stop sign that we didn't even blow, we, you know, and I was driving. So if he really cared about people's safety, he would actually focus on the real things that need to be improved with full self-driving, which there are many, which he hasn't mentioned once. Just a bunch of false information and all this hyperbole and big words for software that's phenomenally good and you can see it in the video well, with Dan sitting Ross, right there. Ross, I don't know. I mean, Dan, I, I don't know which one of you is, shouldn't, don't we just need a driving test for the software, for self-driving? I mean, we if just it's did. a teenager, we just drove I don't mean your Absolutely. test. I don't mean your test. I mean, there ought to be a standard test where it's got to run a course a certain number of times successfully. Maybe it has to be repeated over and over again so that we as society can trust that this software can actually drive. I mean, it's like saying that AI can be trusted to solve business problems or write stories on its own. You have to check its work. So doesn't it have to be certified? Isn't that the real issue here? Government has to say, here's the driving test software. Dan, pass it. Absolutely, you know what, think, positively. No, and that test must include that it does not go past school buses with the lights flashing and run the kids over. It did it. We de we said it was going to happen. We a full page ad in the New York Times, a Super Bowl commercial for okay. God's sakes, and four months later they've done nothing. Okay. That should be in the test. Yeah, but those Ross, you Ross, the tests are Ross, software. Ross, can you agree with that? There ought to just be a standard driving test. Not Ross and Dan went for a ride and the rest of us have to take your word for it how the ride went, right? Society needs to know that this thing is being tested at a level that we can trust it, just like a submersible well, well, I or think, just I like think a my teenager video shows, on the road. I, John, I think my video shows exactly what you're talking about. But no, I not your video. Your like, your video is no, not no, good me, enough for finish. all let the rest finish. of the country to trust, right, Tesla No, no, just let me Doesn't finish. It? I agree there should be a standardized test for autonomous vehicles before we say it's level four autonomy, you don't have to pay attention anymore. I 100% agree. But for the car to learn how to drive, it has to learn through real world experiences, just like this stop sign, where the sign itself was 30 feet in front of the line. The speed limit on that street is too high. It's 35 miles per hour and it should be 25 miles per hour. And what we found was a dangerous 
intersection, yeah, not a problem with full self-driving. You're conceding it, it. You're conceding it missed the, the stop sign, Ross. No, no, no. It, we, the stop sign was 30 feet in front of the actual line. So for the car, it, it creates a certain level of confusion because of the way the intersection was designed. Most stop signs you are actually You have to operate on the roads that are there. You have to right, operate so on learned. the roads that so are you there talk, right now. You've done you the test so many times. You don't get to remake all the roads and drive on the roads when your product Dan, is when unsafe. Dan, when we've spoken it, with this... does not work. I just want to, Dan, kind of get on the record. And regulators, we're told, have taken a sort of cautious approach to this. And I don't understand how we can describe that when these cars are already out on the roads everywhere and this is permitted. What are the current regulations, Dan, around people being able to use full self-driving to the extent to which you guys did and Elon Musk has described and many others? That the current situation is that if it's called a level two car, then it's no regulation. There's no testing. There's no analysis. There's absolutely nothing. You can do anything you want. If it's a level four car, which means no driver, then then there's a bunch of rules and regulations, and you got to go through the state, and it's a lot of work. And Google and Waymo, Waymo and Cruise and people like that have done that, um, and they have self-driving cars today. And okay. but 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 it, but the problem here is what Elon Musk did was brilliant. He wrote into the manual that you have to keep your hands on the wheel at all times. And then he said, well, it's a level two pro problem. It, there's no, there's, it, you have to have your hands on the wheel. But watch the exactly video. So watch the sign. videos. That's exactly what happened. Watch the videos. So, Ross, okay, so, videos. Ross, let, let's bring this back to what matters for investors here. If this self-driving is really going to be level four, self-driving is really going to work, whose insurance is going to pay when the inevitable mistakes get made. And software makes mistakes, even great software makes mistakes. We just need it to make fewer mistakes than humans, right? Is it gonna be Tesla's insurance or the person in the car's insurance who trusted that the software was gonna do what it says? Because it seems to me like maybe it's Tesla's insurance that should pay when the software makes a mistake. That's correct. And that's why Tesla has an insurance company right now and is actually tracking all of our driving, uh, our Tesla drivers driving and scoring it so that they are actually offering the insurance directly to Tesla drivers. And my assumption is once they go to level four, that they will take the liability if there's an accident with a level four vehicle that was their fault. And I have every confidence that as this software is developed and widely adapted, we will save tens of thousands of life. See what Dan's doing is he's hindering per the the he's trying to hinder the the advancement of life-saving technologies cuz he's talking about a fake accident that never happened with some kid at some school bus. Hang on, and it's Dan, really ridiculous. Dan, just 100 to people are going to die today in yeah. regular cars and we, we have to yeah. stop. The the current system is not great. We all grant that. Dan, do you mentioned Cruise and Waymo a moment ago and they do have autonomous vehicles on the road in San Francisco and and the likes. Are they included amongst the players who you think are bad actors here, or do you think that their technology is uh, responsibly being deployed? They are a thousand times more responsible than Tesla, which is reckless. It's not a question of who's insurance pays. It's who goes to jail when you ship a product with, with a bug in it so grotesque that, it's, that everybody knows you don't pass the school bus. And it's been that way seven months, and they've done nothing. That's criminal. The kids are going to die and people should go to jail. Fix the damn software or take it off the road right now or somebody's going to do it for you. This right. is ridiculous. Dan, you know Nobody. They update the software wouldn't every couple there. weeks. Toyota wouldn't do this. We'll leave Nobody would do this. Gentlemen, thank you both. Appreciate you both coming on. Uh, try to get to the bottom of this. Really, we do. Ross Gerber, Dan O'Dowd, we very much appreciate it.